So Quinn yesterday had the opportunity to interview one of the Blizzard developers for uh, Diablo. Lead game designer, Joe Shelley. So wait, I have literally a thousand questions, and I think we have very limited time. Okay. I think we have just under 30 minutes. Just under 30 minutes? Oh my god. Okay, so first of all, uh, can you introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Joe Shelley. Joe Shelley? I'm a league game designer. League game designer. Uh, yeah, oh my god, right. okay, let's just we. So he's the dude so, with all the answers. The question is Paragon levels. There you go. Are they going to be Paragon levels? We're looking at uh, the same kind of philosophy that applied to Diablo 3 in terms of um, when you log in, having, and you sp maybe you play for 30 minutes, maybe you play for an hour, maybe you play for 15 minutes, and having that mean something, like yes. when you log out, making some kind of progress. All right. That philosophy that underpins Paragon levels in Diablo 3 continues to be important to us. But what? in terms of the exact method by which that statement will be true. Okay, we okay so they're going to be called Nephilim levels. <laughs> called it. Called it. That's done. They're not going to have Paragon levels anymore, guys. They're going to be Nephilim levels. Completely different. Completely different system. Still have work to do. We're not going to do exactly the same thing we did in Diablo 3, but we're going to do something that fulfills that same goal. So wait, you're the lead game designer on... Here, here's an idea on how to fulfill that same goal. Continue the loot idea of the best loot can drop anywhere in the game, except for maybe a few separate specific items, and the loot and the chance at getting that loot is the time that you're putting forward in the game. So if you clear one rift, you had a chance of getting a really good item because that's the way the game is supposed to work. That's the way the game has worked the entire time. That's the way PoE works. That's the way ARPGs are, in my opinion, supposed to work fucking RNG, lol Ws. Yes, I'm sorry, but in ARPG, I have a different expectation of gameplay than a fucking than an MMO. Yes, there's a different expectation of gameplay. It's like, do you think that I want a sports game to play the same way as an FPS? No, there's different expectations. Before. There are two lead game designers. There's two. Oh, okay. So, so, so you have like a, a lot of control of what happens? My responsibility is to handle yeah. combat, systems, counters, uh, dungeons. And right. you said... You like the way that Paragon levels worked in DLO 3 in terms of uh, like keeping people playing, but you don't think it's not going to be exactly the same or anything. Right. So, on that question, in game, like, what is it and why would you keep playing it? Like, in terms of what, you know, like, you just like, obviously in D3, it's just grinding. Yeah. It's yeah. just greater forever and ever and ever. Yeah, we have a lot of end game to build. Um, we want, the, we want when you reach end game, for you to participate in a variety of different activities. Uh, so, the World Boss of Shava is one activity that you might I haven't done it yet, in. but... Uh, yeah, it's available in the demo. It's the first time you've been able to play, uh, bring many people together to take down a uh, single monster, a single boss. And it's it's so big that we have to pull the camera out a little bit. Yo, at least Quinn is asking good questions. Not like, oh, so, uh, why did you decide to make the game so good? When are we going to be able to pre-order it? Oh, you know, so I I'm glad that, you know, Quinn's asking real questions. Uh, this is awesome. So, yeah, I mean, a world boss? What the fuck do you mean a world boss is in-game content? You just run up there and kill him. I watched the world boss. This is something that's designed to be killed by people that have no coordination or communication at all. Like, I'm sorry, but like the world boss, I don't consider that in-game content. That's a joke. The world, oh my, okay, so world, so world bosses. Uh, well, let me, let me say that, uh, so we want to have a variety of activities. The world boss is one activity. Key dungeons are going to be an activity. Okay. Key dungeons are inspired by greater rifts. So you're saying so like- greater rifts. And key Dungeons be, is like, so, so you're saying GRs, when you say Key Dungeon. They're inspired by Greater Rifts, but it's a different system. And there'll be additional activities beyond that. <laughs> These Key Dungeons, yes. are they going yes. to be uh, infinitely scaling? They will scale, uh, I don't know if they'll infinitely scale, but they'll scale to an extent that there's no so concern like, about reaching the maximum. Yeah, oh, activity. what? Okay. So, 
Uh, the That's exactly what they said with fucking greater rifts. They're they're not infinitely scaling because there's a limitation on the technical capacity of the uh, of, of the processor in the game because it can't go over 342 trillion because then after that happens it explodes. But you can only go up to fucking one trillion, so it's like it effectively scales infinitely. I, I mean, I it just okay. That, that's such a, like, come on, guys. The way that this works is we have, in the world, there are hundreds of dungeons. And you can experience them at different levels, leveling up and so forth. At max level, you can get a key, and that key will be for a specific dungeon. So let's say Garen Hold from the demo. Okay. The key, when used, transforms Garen Hold for you and your party, if you choose to go in with a party, into a max level dungeon and it has a rank on it, oh. somewhat similar to Greater Rifts, and that rank can increase and increases the difficulty of the dungeon. Okay, so I, what, what max level? Uh, What's the, max level? The max level... What's the fucking, like, uh, it increases the difficulty of the dungeon? And then what? Yes, Mythic Plus Dungeons, uh, this is like a uh, Path of Exile map, etc. Yes, we all understand the parallels. So you go into the same dungeon that you did at level 20, at level 60 or 70 or whatever the max level 100 or whatever the max level in Diablo 4 is going to be, and you kill the same bosses with what? The same mechanics? And maybe they have like one modifier, like a PoE map mod, except for PoE map mobs, there's mods, there's 40 of them. And with this, there's probably only going to be two active. I, I, I don't know. Uh, grinding is what Diablo is about. What the fuck are you complaining about? Here's what I'm complaining about. I'm complaining about grinding the same shit over and over and over. I think that in-game should be more dynamic. I think the problem with Diablo 3's in-game is that it's not dynamic. It, it doesn't feel dynamic. It feels way too repetitive. We don't know for sure yet. It's 40 right now. 40 right could now. change. Okay. Uh, we have a long way to go. Okay. On top of that, the key has affixes on it. Oh, and so it's the, Mythic Plus. It's really similar to oh, Mythic Plus in a lot of ways. Okay, I, I probably, add okay. mechanics to the dungeon, can add mechanics to the boss fights. Okay. Um, so it really changes how the dungeon plays. Oh, wow. And in terms of mechanics, is it going to be like something that will really okay. change it, or is it going to be like increase life by like 10%? No, or it's like, significant. Uh, if you, like game, if game you check mechanics. out the um, systems and features panel tomorrow, uh, okay. the lead dungeon designer, Zavin, is going to talk a little bit more about that. One of the affixes, to give you an example, is this um, lightning pulse. Um, it's like a obelisk of rock and lightning magic, and it follows you through the dungeon. You can't, you can't kill it, you can't stop it, and it, it releases periodic lightning pulses. God, you no. keep moving, you have to... Um, to play, will it kill you? Is it like an? Is it like a time? Is it like? Is it like a some sort it, of? It's not a wall of death. It's an object that oh. chases you through the dungeon. Okay. And it can and it releases pulses that do a wide area of damage. So in terms of affixes, are they? Is it going to be positive affixes? There may be. Yeah, we're really trying to experiment with all kinds of different ways to uh, okay. change the way that the dungeon plays and, and make it replayable. Uh, okay. In really different ways. So there may be. Speaking of positive and negative affixes, on uh, when it comes to itemization. Is it gonna be like kiss with curse items in terms of like I you gonna have like a legendary which has some bad thing attached to it, but then it gives you some really good thing. For... I, I don't know. So I really like those items. Um, kiss curse items are really hard to design successfully. <laughs> um, they tend to there tends to be a right answer, or there tends to be a case where you can get really badly um, screwed over yeah. by them. Um, but That's true. maybe Right now, maybe. Right now, the the legendaries that we that we have. That I feel like they had that kind of to a degree in Diablo three. I remember. I don't know. Was it Andariel's visage that didn't have any stamina on it or any vitality on it? I forgot what the helmet was. But there are a number of items that didn't really have a lot of vitality. And I think like you can look at um, minus fire. Yeah, it was something like that. And, uh, yeah, it, it didn't have a lot of something. And so they, they had, and this is even in, like, Classic WoW. Look at Classic WoW, like, Lionheart Helm is an almost kiss curse item, but it's a fully offensive item. So if you use Lionheart Helm, the curse that you get with that is the fact that you're not gaining by any stamina. 
So I think that they can do kiss curse items without explicitly having it be a negative affix that's associated with the piece of gear. And I think they can do that by just not giving that item as many defensive stats. PoE does that well? Uh, yeah, to some degree, yeah. We're ready to talk about are things that modify existing skills. So, for example, yeah. your sorceress has a teleport, yeah. and then you can get a legendary that, say, removes the cooldown on teleport. You can get another legendary that, say, um, okay. allows it to do a Nova area when you teleport. So you can combine those to change the way teleport works. I see. So... That was in that was literally in D three. Like that that exact same thing was in D three. Right? You'd have like what was that? Wand of Woe and like what was the what was the thing that made teleport infinite? Uh, I don't remember. Like, yeah, that was exact and like teleport, like there was a glyph that you'd use to teleport, and whenever you teleport to your location, you deal arcane damage. Like I I, I don't know, I feel like that that was already Enigma yeah, it was already in Geom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was this was already in the game. There are also legendaries that uh, are equipable by a variety of classes and do other things like summon uh, hydras. So far, I haven't seen anything like this, but I'm kind of worried. In Diablo 3, there's uh, a lot of items, for example, that have multiplies on them. Which Ooh. is like, if you're going to use one skill, then you're forced into basically using like every single multiplier item for that said skill. Is it going to be multipliers on items? Um, Say no. Certainly, legendary items make the item more powerful. Say no. What you're probably asking about is in D3, a 4,000% multiplier. You know, 3,000% damage yeah. to something. Or 10,000. Yeah, so we're not going in that direction. Yeah. Good. Um, the legendary items. Good. The idea of the legendary items is that you can further modify your skills beyond that which is allowed through the skill system, through the talent system, um, to really customize your playstyle. Thank fucking God. That's why Diablo 3 has such a massive fucking power scaling problem, is because you have multipliers that are scaling with multipliers. You have an ability that increases your damage by 10,000%, and then you have another gem that increases your critical strike damage by 100%. And so you multiply all these fucking things, oh, and you have a belt that increases your damage by 100%, and all these percentages, you're going up to the fucking moon with damage, man! You're up to the fucking moon. It's too much. And that's why the scaling in D3 is so fucking bad. In, in original D3, it was not that bad unless you got like really, really biskier. And then like, yeah, it did become ridiculous. But it took a lot longer to get to that point. Okay. And we're building hundreds of legendaries. Hundreds. So yeah. yeah. So there's loads of legendaries in Diablo 3, but you basically, have, you, you just equip a six set and then you have like two or three slots. To, to, to use. It's like, okay, which rank do I want to use? Or like, you know, yeah. I have to use this helmet because it has a multiplier on it. And it's very limited choice. Are you doing that same thing where it's like, uh, you know, D3, it's like the illusion of choice. What's the point? Just go with sets all the way? Yeah. Like, because I heard there are sets, which kind of scares, it scares me because I, I, hate, I hate sets. Yeah. Um, we're not doing that. So one of the things that, so there are a couple yeah. of places where sets what? are really cool. One is the set look gives uh, the ability to to really live out some kind of fantasy. And there's yeah. some really, really cool sets, sets, right? Yeah. The other thing is that when you initially the way to reach the max level and you want to sort of get into something and, and like get a sense of like, all right, what do I want to do? Let me yeah. get some build together that can be so, effective. So, new set is so, so for, for new players. Yeah, and, okay. and so in Diablo 4, legendaries are as or more powerful than set items. So, so would you, you say will, you will graduate out of it? Well, that, that's what they. That's what it was in Diablo three. Legendaries are as or more powerful than set items too. Not every single piece, but like. I I don't know. No, I feel like. Whenever I played, there were plenty of legendaries that were as powerful as set items. Yeah. Sets were OP? Well, here's what I think has happened, and, and, and try to bear with me with this. I think that as time has gone on, sets have become more and more powerful, and legendaries have not become more and more powerful. So whenever I was originally playing the game, what I'm saying is true. But whenever we were fucking playing, whenever you play the game now, then yeah, I think that you guys are right. 
So whenever I was playing, I do think that legendaries were not, especially like in vanilla D3, like set items were not fucking these godly things that completely changed the game like they are now. But as time has gone on, Blizzard has buffed sets and made sets more powerful than the legendaries. Okay, uh, Bulls Legendary and D3 Vanilla. Yeah, but that's like one example. I think there's plenty of examples that are the opposite. Be a uh, point where a set would be the most meta thing, where like you would have like sets like. So you're saying that you start that's off okay with it and then you'd switch them out with legendaries. It's not all so the you time. basically sets are just a stepping zone, yeah. and then they'll be phased out. Well, not phased out, but like almost phased out. There, there might be some situations where you're using a, uh, a set for something, but but no, the idea is not okay. to have the, the meta be. Um, so you were saying they look aesthetically really cool. Can you? If you really like the set, can you transmog that set to, like, on top of your own items? Is it going to be like transmog or uh, anything like that? We are looking at bringing transmog. Uh, to so you're considering board. it? Okay. Yeah. All right. I hope they don't do it at the beginning. I hope they don't do transmog at the beginning of the game. Because uh, like, if you want to have a shared world, if you want to have a shared world, Joe, how is somebody going to feel like a winner whenever they go into town and they're wearing all their badass gear and then somebody else goes into town and they look like they're wearing a bunch of badass gear? It devalues the badassness of looking like you have badass gear whenever everybody that has badass gear doesn't necessarily have badass gear. So in-game transmog only? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like transmog... It does, like, there's a visual progression. Well, no, there's a visual progression progression in characters. And in WoW, for example, if you saw somebody in town in Classic WoW with full tier 2, you knew they were really well geared and they were badasses. But as time has gone on, that's gone away with Transmog because now everybody has the ability to look really cool in the game. So if Blizzard wants to do this with Diablo 4, I hope they don't have it in on release. And they just see how players uh, adapt and what players, you know, place value in, in like the uh, the social systems of the game. And then maybe they can add transmog later on if it doesn't seem to be an issue. All right. Okay, we have a million questions. SSF, this is a really fun. You could just like just yeah. say no. Okay. If 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 it's like this like not happening or maybe or like you know just okay. SSF solo self found. So, oh. Oh, so yes. like a pile of exile. I mean, people like Leviathan and a bunch of other people do it in DL with three, where you just don't play with anyone else. You can choose to play that way if you want. Um, we're not going to officially support it in like a, a game so mode like a, or something. Like a like no no sort of game mode where you can select that. Okay. I don't think so. Okay, that's pretty big. So there's no solo self found. Um. <sighs> I feel like solo self found has always been like kind of a community thing. So I can see why they're making that decision. But no solo self found equals no offline mode. They're not going to have an offline mode. Like the, there's never going to be there. Like the, the age of games with offline modes died like five or seven years ago. Like just get that out of your fucking head. There's not going to be any more offline modes. Uh, vegan gamers want solo self found? Yeah, I guess so. But um, yeah, offline modes are dead. Uh, Dabble V can be run offline as console. Yeah, but consoles can't be modded and modified as easily as PCs can, so it makes sense. So, uh, ladders and things in uh, competitive systems, is there going to be a, like, any, any sort of, like, you said with keystones, like for example, is it going to be like a, a leaderboard in game that we can access to see who has the highest, like, you know, keystone clear or? Uh... Yeah, we like leaderboards when they're meaningful to. Yeah. Uh, and the, the case where they tend to be most meaningful is when there's a, a fairly small group of people who are competing for that thing. Yeah. We, f we find if you look at, at uh, Diablo 3 leaderboards, yeah. uh, there are you know, 100 or maybe 500 people who care about yeah, that. Yeah, it's one of it's me. And uh, like, <laughs> like 10, 10 a, at the top end, bro. Like sure, and there are people who are 40,000th. Yeah. And the leaderboard isn't super useful to them. Yeah. So the way that we, to the extent, we're, we're still figuring it out, but the way that we want to approach leaderboards is to focus on uh, specific aspects that where they can be really meaningful and less on like the, who's the PvP? top ever, ever person out of, you know, yeah, yeah. people. 
So, so you're saying most meaningful? Does that mean what? What does that mean? So it does means that, that they'll be uh, for sort of specific uh, activities or challenges. Okay. So, um, it won't be a, a, like I said. We have a lot of a long way to go. Okay. Um, but if you look at uh, the some of the leaderboards in Diablo three, we had the, the seasonal uh, conquests where you were, were doing something yeah, yeah. more more specific. So more in that direction, but it's it's pretty early to say really. Okay. I think that like making leaderboards more relevant for people is obviously a good thing. Uh, I, I can't see how anybody would consider that a bad thing. But at the same time, I'm not really like, oh my God, wow, this is so crazy and cool. Uh, I mean, really, it's just, it's not, it's a lot, it, it, I, I can't really see how that's going to make the game better in a way. But if they can get people to, I guess, motivate themselves by getting into that type of leaderboard, yeah, that'd be cool. I just don't see how you can motivate a casual player to care about leaderboards. I think that's like a challenge for them. Um, trading. So you said there was going to yes. be trading. Okay. In the uh, announcement and everything. Yes. So is it like, do you have soul bat? Is it just people who are in your group when an item drops? Like, you know, can, can you just trade things? Can I equip an item and then trade to some other guy after I've finished using it? Is it going to be auction house? There will not be an auction house. Oh. Um, the way that, tr so... We haven't settled on a specific trading system yet. Okay. We have a philosophy for how trading will work, and the idea is that when you get the predominant source of getting items in Diablo 4 should be from killing monsters. That's true. It's the same philosophy that that was the reasoning that we removed the auction house of Diablo 3. However, we want to integrate trading more closely into Diablo 4. So we're exploring several different possible systems to do that. And the one that we are currently leaning toward, and we would like your feedback on how you guys feel about trading, uh, is one where there would be three three types of items. Okay. A type of items that are tradable all the time. Okay. With no restrictions. So that would that be, what, what kind of so example items would that be? Consumables, crafting mats, um, certain items, a certain armor perhaps. Uh, there'd also be items that can be traded once and then become bound. Oh, that's spicy. And then uh, some set of items that can never be traded. They're bound, bound when so you So like some out. sort of legendary thing or, Possibly or like ultimate. The, yeah. Likely the most powerful items, but uh, would be would be bound on pickup. But the line of where that is, uh, in terms of just having those three categories, we have a lot of flexibility in terms of like, well, how many items does that mean that are bound on pickup? Right? Like, is it is it two items? Is it 100, yeah. 500 items? Like, where is that line? So we have a lot of balancing within that that system, but that may not be the system we go to, go with. Uh, that's really interesting, to be honest with you. Uh, at the, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to waste time. We've got very limited time. Okay. So I, I guess items that can only be traded once. They're trying to do away with commodities markets with like Stone of Jordan and Diablo 2. I think that like also I, like my understanding is Stones of Jordan are basically used as currency in Diablo 2 in some sort of a way. And uh, I, I don't know really if that's a good idea. Personally, I'm not really a big fan of them trying to limit trading at all. I think that they should just allow people to trade gear pretty much wholesale and do that. Uh, I do think, however, that there should be items like if there's like a boss, like uh, the equivalent of sh what Shaper is in Path of Exile. If there's a boss in uh, what do you call it in in Diablo 4 that's as hard as Shaper, I think maybe those items should be soul bound. And, and that way it, it makes, there's like more of an impact to somebody getting and having those items because you know that they weren't able to just buy them. Shaper's easy. Well, for an average player, he's not, right? And that, that's that's what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, Uber Elder, well, Shaper's, are, well, yeah, I mean, I think that yeah, most of the people don't care boosting. Yeah, yeah, Uber Elder, whatever. Then you just pay for carries. There's always going to be a way that people are going to figure out to get items and figure out to trade things, real money, gold, something like that. I don't like the idea 
of trying to limit that kind of stuff. I think people should be able to trade shit around as much as they want, right? And there should be a few exceptions with like super high-end game gear. I think maybe that is true, but, and that should only be items that drop from that specific boss, not just like, you know, a really good item that's just not tradable by the nature of it being a really good item, but it has to be a really good item and it's not tradable because it comes from an exclusive source. Crafting. So uh, I play a lot of Path of Exile, and uh, yeah. they have a very, like, they have, like, five different end games for crafting, and you've got, like, yeah. all these different things you can do. It's a lot. Diablo 3, for example, is just, like, you need X, and then you craft Y, and it's an item that's just uh, kind of like a beginner item, and it's not got any depth to it. Are you looking into doing any sort of crafting end game, like meta crafting, anything, like, crazy? Yeah, so we're, we're definitely going to bring crafting forward into Diablo 4 and expand on it. Good. There will be opportunities to craft, to create items through crafting. A lot of the end game is going to be about item modification. Oh. And the crafting will also incorporate the world. So a big part of they having that a huge seamless 3. connected world is going out and getting things, uh, whether that's uh, slaying monsters yeah. or finding some something rare in some corner of the world. Okay. So... Does that mean they had that in Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls, I believe. Uh it's like there would be certain items like I forgot what any of the items were called. It was so long ago. But you would need certain items that would only drop from certain bosses and rare mobs in the game and you would use those items to craft different things. So this is already something that they did in Diablo 3 and I don't really think it turned out particularly great, but it was kind of interesting, right? Uh Bundus mats. Yeah, uh Reaper wraps. Yeah, yeah, there's one of those and again, I could just look at a lot of this stuff, okay? There won't be some sort of system where you can like... So you're saying you can modify items and you can go out and collect things to craft a certain item. But will there be like um, any sort of, you know, thing where you can just sit there in town crafting for like five hours, like some random item using like materials, for example? Uh, I, yeah, like, it, if you collected a lot of materials, you could oh. craft all those materials into something. And then um, sell it and then get more materials and just do like, you know, almost... Uh, I don't... Right, you're asking if, like... like uh, if crafting could be an crafting in-game. crafting player. Yeah, you could like, be, like, a craft... Because cool people do that. Like, literally just play crafting, and that's it. And then uh, yeah. that's what they do. I, I I think Diablo's more about slaying monsters. Fair enough. Uh, okay. So I can respect I, that. It's there, There's a there's certainly an, an element of crafting, but I don't think you would be, like, I am a crafter, and that's my... my role. So uh, this is kind of like... From what I've seen, it's almost borderline MMO, right? Well, online. Yeah, right. yeah, that's a good question and I have, too. Is it going to be seasons? Is it going to be, like, leagues? Or, uh... There will be seasons, um, and we're going to have a lot more details to share about how those work in the future. Oh. And I think crafting, like, as a crafting as an end game might be a little bit much, and I don't know if there's really ever going to be a game that's not, like, a long-form MMO where crafting is going to play such a large part. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't really say. So, yeah, PoE. Uh, PoE is like, well, I, I think like PoE is much more long form than Diablo, right? I mean, I, I guess like it's not really by the nature of it being an MMO, but it's like a super, it's a game with like a superly, like massively, like high depth system. And Path of Exile has that. And Diablo not having like a super, like in depth crafting system, for some players, that's disappointing. And for some players, it's not. So I, I can't really say. What the timing of them are, but yes. Okay. Uh, Question, another, oh, yo. Uh, one thing I can say about seasons is that we're, um, the- So there will be seasons. We're um, going to modify what the most powerful items are from season to season so that the metagame shifts. Ooh, they do this. I like that. Yeah, and they, they, they do this already. In like, so in terms of content patching, how how in, are you guys going to do it? Is it going to be like every yeah, three months you're going to patch the game with new stuff? Is it going to be like legendaries getting pumped into the system to really miss up the meta, or is it going to be uh, more about balancing? Or yeah, so the the, the, the yeah, season, be awesome. The, the system that I talked about, where we where we adjust um, sort of uh, where we add mechanics to adjust the uh, the meta game from season to season. We'll handle part of that, but we'll also we're also going to be um, releasing content, uh, especially through expansions. Expansions? Oh wow, that's huge. Okay. A question that everyone's been asking and spamming me. Expansions. I mean, 
I do not find a lot of solace in a game that doesn't even have a release date planning for expansions. Like, I, I don't find a lot of confidence. I think confidence is a better word. Uh, I don't... The, the confidence that I have in that is very, very low. And I don't like the idea of spacing things out. And, like, I get the idea, like, yeah, they have a five-year plan of it. And, you know, it makes sense. Like, whatever. But whenever I just hear that, I... There's nothing wrong with that. It is whenever they're already planning on gating certain types of content behind that. I think that is an issue. And uh, this early in development, uh, I think that they should not really be looking at doing that. This is like my opinion, but uh, it, it just, it's, it, it's worrisome. Ask, and I'm kind of interested in this challenge right here. Yes. Um, yeah, okay. Is this like a, a concept? Or is this like what is going? Is this fleshed out? Like what's? Because from what it's I can see, this, this, you have two lines, and then you I guess you just make you have to pick between certain things. Uh, like is this is this it? Is this what, how the talent trees are going to look on? Like well, it's similar to in on release. Uh, so this is an, uh, the talent and skill trees are both uh, this is a talent in areas bush. where we uh, want feedback from bush. everybody. Um, in fact, the reason that. If you go to the skill tree, for example, you'll see that you can actually mouse over all the skills and you can mouse over all the talents here. Uh, and the reason that even though it's a demo Don't and you, you know, the skills are, are yeah. locked for the demo, we want to give players a look at, at what we're planning for these three classes uh, and, and get stump. feedback on it. So, okay. yes, this, these are the talent trees as they yeah, currently stand. As they currently stand. So are you planning? Because okay, for me, I, I mean, I can't like to be even. I mean, I get that you know it's one of those things where it's like an illusion. Like there eventually will be some meta build which everyone goes or whatever. Yeah. But like, I really like having choices to make like stupid builds and you know weird yeah. stuff. Like, is there going to be any sort of like uh, you know tributes or other things like passive trees that give you like uh, okay, I guess kind of like this, but just way bigger. Um, yeah. So it's are you going to do what Poe is going to do? Add more things like that, but a lot of that kind of customization comes through legendary items. Oh, wow, okay. So, for example, um, we have legendary items. Uh, Stone of Jordan is in the demo, and we have other legendary items that increase ranks of talents or skills um, beyond the dollar cap. In terms of the skills, uh, can you... So, I, I see it's got a number and a level. Uh, they're copying PoE. The talent tree looks so fucking small. Yeah, I mean, doesn't change your build, it just increases the damage. No, there, there are different uh, legendaries that change your build in Diablo, or at least they were whenever I played. And even if there's not, you want to say there's not, there should be. If they can do that, they should be able to do that. Yeah, I, I mean, there's plenty of things like that. Uh, here's the thing, guys, is that, yeah, show the PoE tree for comparison. Well, all right, I'll show you. So this is the Diablo 4 tree. And now we'll go ahead and PoE skill tree and images. Okay, there it is. Look at this and then view image. Oh, what the fuck? Why didn't that work? So this is the PoE skill tree. Um, so this is a little, there are, there are more of the little things on here, right? And this is what I was talking about with the game so I was talking to Zach about this, right, a little bit yet last night. And he says, like, yeah, you know what? Like, complexity isn't always better. Like, there are some people that see this tree and they're like, nope, nope, I don't want to deal with that. It's too much. And for some of those people, this tree right here is more their speed. This is what they want to do. They don't want to have a bunch of fucking, you know, weird-ass shit with, like, a, a million different trees. So I, I think, like, and that's not... They're not wrong because of their, they're, they're not like bad people because of that, etc. So I, I'm just going to move this a little bit so you can see the title of the, of the, the video, right? Uh, let's see if I can do this. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right, we, we're good. And, and so anyway, I, I think that point actually does make a lot of sense. Simplicity or sorry, complexity does not equal better. Complexity does not always make something just simply better. But I do think that Path of Exile skill tree is... That this is more compelling and interesting to me, right? Because like Path of Exile has the same stuff. 
Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll go back. back to the the modification of the skill done by items. Okay. It's done by items. Uh, yeah. So the skills, when you level up, you acquire skill points, and you can use your skill points to unlock or increase the rank of skills. And that can, makes the skill more powerful and can mm -hmm. add properties to it. Uh, you cannot respect skills, but you can acquire additional skill tomes um, through doing various activities in the game. Oh. They give you more skill points so that you can you can build out that, that skill tree and make the skills more and more powerful. Okay. This is going to be a big one. Monetization. Uh, is there any just sort of oh. decision made in terms oh. of how? So is it going to be like you just buy the game and then that's it, or are you gonna, is it going to be microtransactions within the game, or are you doing like give us the real shit, Joe? How Let are you us planning know. to monetize it and like keep getting funding, I guess, to like keep making heaps of content? So Diablo 4 will be available as a base game, and as I said, we're going to have expansions. Um, you also will be able to uh, acquire cosmetics in the game. Um, through. So MTX. Oh wow! Is that going to be through some sort of shop, or can? It's very early. Oh wow! So, okay. But yes. Oh okay. Uh, that's okay, really it's a shop. I mean, to be honest, I really do like the the whole MTX uh, monetization scheme because I don't know. I feel like if the, they make even you know if it's really successful, it's making lots of money, then you know that they're, they're going to keep making stuff for the game. It's not going to die. You well, know? it's also an op opportunity to have more options available than you would otherwise. I mean. Build more stuff, of course. Oh, come on. Um, that, that's... Uh, I, I actually agree with... No, Quinn is not shilling. Shut the fuck up. How the hell do you think they're gonna work? Like, do you know how much they pay those fucking devs over at Blizzard? They pay them slave wages because they're like, well, you should be lucky to work here. Blizzard is a great pro company, so you gotta work for less money. You know, fuck that, man. Like, I'm completely okay with Path of Exile selling a little bit of skins. I just wish a few of the in-game items were a little bit cooler looking, right? It, it's gotta be a give and take. Like, but Path of Exile is also free. It's also fucking free. The only thing that I don't like is randomized items. I am okay. Like, do you know how much money I've spent on Path of Exile? Look, I'll show you. Just a minute. It's a $500 hoodie. I don't know what I was thinking that day. A $500 hoodie. I bought the fucking supporter, whatever the fuck it was, package. This is my $500 Path of Exile hoodie. I'll put it on. It's actually really comfortable. And, uh, yeah, Asmon the whale. No, you're right. It, it is the whale. They're like, oh, you could get extra points or whatever. I've spent, yeah, it was literally $500. Probably the, the biggest, the, the biggest purchase I've ever made. Uh, for anything that's not basically buying subs for my own fucking channel. So, uh, yeah, I, I did that scam. I don't give a fuck, man. Like, I, I, I wanted to support the game. I spent... I had $22 in my bank account, and I spent 15 of it donating to Path of Exile so I could keep playing the beta after the close, sorry, the open beta ended back in 2012. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, listen, making bad financial decisions for Path of Exile... This is something that I've made a history of doing, okay? How about the Death Adder mouse? Oh, the $400 Shroud mouse? Yeah, I don't use that one anymore. It's not that good. Uh, anyway, so yeah, subs gave you the jacket. Yeah, I bought the Nemo. Yeah, right. And so anyway, uh, I, I bought this uh, this Path of Exile uh, thing right here. And um, I'm okay with microtransactions to an extent. Uh, but the only thing that I'm not a big fan of is whenever the microtransactions are randomized. Because I do feel like that does kind of prey on people with gambling tendencies. And I don't think they're necessary in any sort of a healthy game. But randomized microtransactions, or randomized microtransactions, I'm not a fan of. But any other microtransaction, I'm okay with. This is kind of a specific question. Okay. Uh, but a lot of people are only asking it. Hideouts. So I don't know if you know what a hideout is in uh, PoE, for example. Or like, it's like a, like a I love how he keeps sort of referencing thing, PoE. Like go there and then you can do various things and invite your mates over do whatever and yeah. craft stuff a a any plans for instance play housing hideouts that's an interesting idea I we don't have anything to announce on that all right oh, oh, this got page. i got another page this page, I, have I, page. I, have, I have infinite pages right. of questions bro don't worry no don't worry i'm gonna just i'm gonna pick my favorite questions okay, yeah. okay add-ons um like DPS oh, meters, for example, like you know, like cos like UI add-ons that you can like basically modify That's a great UI. question. Well, like you know, for example, we have like that a, is a great a DPS question. meter to check like your death logs, so you know how you died. Uh, for example, uh, it's important to oh. us that you know how you died. Of course, um, I think 
what often happens in games with DPS meters is uh, you you end up feeling bad about how you did. Yeah, I know. Because you didn't. You didn't or like, you feel good because you're the top. Sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we don't have anything to announce on that specifically. Uh, I think our our goal would be to put everything that you need to play the game into the base game itself. Okay. <coughs> and what about, what about customization of your interface? Like, another question, very good one. Uh, so the key binds in the game yeah. uh, that I had, I think it's gone to sleep, whatever. Can, like, how many skill skill bars? Is, it, is that the, the skill bars locked in? Can we, like... Okay. Damage meters. What he is saying actually does make sense. I know this might be upsetting because, you know, you're hearing something that's not, uh, you know, what you're used to. But what he's saying actually does make sense. He's saying that if there are damage meters in the game, the meta basically evolves around being able to top those damage meters. And if you're not doing that, then you're fucking useless. That actually is true. Regardless of, you know, if you think that's the way the game is working or not, that actually is true. That being said, I still want damage meters. I, I, I want damage meters. It's the same as like in PoE. I don't like how I can't see the numbers in the game. I, I understand it's like a creative decision and, you know, like it, it, the game is what it is, but I don't like that. Uh, I like having more information. And this is coming from somebody like, you know, that plays WoW, and there's like a million different different tools that you can look at to see, you know, everything about everything. So, uh, yeah, I want to see numbers. I, I love seeing numbers. Uh, that's what matters. And if you don't have numbers, you have basically pseudo numbers. So it's like how much, like you have, like PoE, they have like simulators that show you how much damage you're doing. People still get to the numbers anyway. It's just they have to do it through a more contrived and separated and disconnected way. So it still happens, but it's harder to uh, to get to. Modify Path the keybinds. Yeah. Can we like change the left click to force move, for example? That's one really big thing, which is not in D3. And it's uh, really... Yes, you can modify your, your keybinds, and um, so Diablo 3 had elective mode, uh, which was available through a, a okay. checkbox yeah. in the UI. For like new, okay. new players. But in Diablo 4, we're building it from the ground up with the idea that you yes. can modify your skills to... Uh, it's part of creating the, the character in the build that you want. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, cheat prevention. So in Diablo 3... Um, there's a lot of people using like third-party stuff that like automatically uses skills. So there's you know Turbo HUD, like which is, like you know some sort of map hack thing, like and, and they people do that with PoE with, with flasks. Is there is it is going to be like more emphasis on cheat prevention in D4? Yeah, we take that very seriously, and it's a big uh, 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 an item of very much importance to us to make sure that the game is uh, pure and uh, that everyone who's playing the game has a fair experience. Okay. Wow, I was expecting him to say that we don't care about cheating at all and we just want our game to run rampant with people that are completely gaining unfair advantages over people that are playing the game ethically. Yeah, uh, that's great, Joe, but like, I want to see, like, if somebody asked you that about D3, I think your answer would be the exact same. The issue with this is that like, in, in WoW, they do a pretty good job banning hackers. Like, to be fair, they do a pretty good job banning hackers. And in, in a lot of the other Blizzard games, like, in Overwatch, I never ran into any hackers or cheaters either. Are they? Yeah, they, they do. They, they do a pretty good job banning them, all right? Like, let's give, let's be reasonable here and say Blizzard doesn't do everything wrong, all right? There are some things they do correctly. Uh, Overwatch, is, I don't know. I never went. I never ran into a hacker in Overwatch or anything like that. I mean, every game has this problem, though. Uh, in, in general, not in Overwatch. I mean, I, I don't. I, I, as I said, I, I never ran into one. I didn't play the game a lot, you know, like recently. So maybe it's more common now. And Overwatch is full of cheaters. Then, then, then I'm wrong, right? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. That's not a hill that I'm willing to die on. But I am going to say that WoW does a great job banning cheaters. They do. They do a very, very good job at it. Whenever you compare it to any other game, they do a very good job. And, 
You got no. What? What is that really like? Just like I don't know. What? Whatever. Um. But yeah, I think that uh, they did it now, but not in the past. Well, I'm not talking about the past. I'm not going to judge their current their current cheating mechanisms based off of what happened ten years ago. Uh. Anyway, so hopefully that's true. Uh, I think we're almost out of time. I want to ask one like stupid last question. Yo, uh, ETA, when's it, when's it coming out? All right. <laughs> I, mean, for, like, I mean, estimate. I, I mean, I know you yeah. guys said like PS4, right? Like, which is like, there's almost PS5 coming out. Which, uh, uh, so oh, we, we that's a good point. That it's coming out for PC and uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Uh, we don't have any other announcements in terms of. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought that'd be the case. Time. And uh, if you listen to Luis at the opening ceremony, he yeah. says it's not coming soon, not even Blizzard soon. That's about as much as I can get. But that is monka is. I will I will I say that if you look at is. the if you look at the world of Sanctuary, um, you can actually go into the game and bring up the map. It's huge. You can zoom Absolutely out. Absolutely massive. And, and look at how how much of the demo. Uh, hmm? how small the demo area is compared to the world that we're building and it takes a long time to build all that yeah i can imagine i mean yeah it's yeah. absolutely like, i i when i zoomed out i kind of like no freaked out even, oh i'm inside the dungeon oh, yeah. ah, that's what it is thank you two minutes yeah okay thank you so much for your time and honestly i was expecting you to not answer like a lot of these questions <laughs> and you just outright just aren't just no <laughs> yes like straight to the point which well, is absolutely amazing i love that i'm you know, glad about that too the blizzard is being a little more upfront i guess and like more <laughs> straight to the point instead of being oh, well. super diplomatic you know well uh, thank you obviously quinn couldn't ask every question and I think that overall, I think Quinn did a really good job answering and asking the questions that uh, people wanted to know. I want you guys to get an idea of the scale of the map. My understanding is there's five of these. There's supposed to be five of these. What the fuck? Blizzard, take all the time you need. But please hurry up.